welcome to the West 7th Wool Podcast. This is a show about our local yarn shop here in Fort Worth, Texas, called West 7th Wool. I'm Amy. I'm Hunter. And what's going on this week? What is going on this week? Uh, well, we, uh, well, first, what just happened, we just had our anniversary sale. We did, yeah. It's our third. Mm-hmm. The shop's been open for three years. That's right. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> yeah, um, in hindsight, the anniversary s- timing is not exactly ideal because it comes right on the heels of Fiberfest and then local yarn shop day, which technically didn't exist until after we opened up. True. Not our fault. Yeah, we were thinking of maybe combining local yarn store day with our anniversary sale. Mm-hmm. That's something maybe. we could do going forward or... There's also there was also some talk about potentially um, doing it Mother's Day weekend after all, and perhaps incentivizing folks to do a thing for Mother's Day. Day. Maybe I don't know. We've got a couple of different ways we can go with it. Well, we opened on May seventh, so we like to have mm-hmm. it right around there because that's you know the anniversary. Yeah, and since May seventh this year was on a weekday, the debate was: do we have the weekend before or the weekend after? But the weekend before was Mayfest weekend, which I offered we did. its own logistical. I thought we did have it the weekend before. We did. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a debate before you sell it on that. Uh, yeah, or at least a conversation. And we're like, should we do it Mayfest weekend or Mother's Day weekend? And we decided the week before Mayfest. Is it coming back? No, I didn't remember anything about Mayfest. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Mayfest was specifically mentioned. I don't know. I usually don't think about it until it's actually happening or after. I think if you don't have a kid in a dance program, you don't, mm-hmm. you don't know. Yeah, Mayfest kind of... That's one of the only reasons I went ever went to Mayfest. It's if you're in a dance thing. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It's fun, though. It's fun. You know, kids enjoy it. They have super expensive beer (laughs) (laughs) and funnel cakes yep (laughs) all right so we also this coming sunday uh chris and kathy is going to be teaching a circle weaving class yes which is this is a lovely example of circle weaving so um you just show up all the materials are included the um the hoops all the everything's included so you can sign up on our website or give us a call if you'd like to participate in the circle weaving class with Kristen that's right spots still available spots are still available Mm -hmm. Um, otherwise our other classes this week I think (laughs) (laughs) do you want to turn the ringer off I don't know how it should it should Stop after four or five rings. It's good. (laughs) All right. So uh, the other classes we have are our regular beginning. Mm -hmm. Beginning knit and crochet. And then uh, woolen spun spinning with Mel. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. That's right. That's what's going on. Cool. Cool. Well, what kind of new things did we get? We have got so many new things, so very many new things. Um, let's start with Jewel. We got a reorder of Jewel enclosures. They do things like shawl pins and like these little um, closures that you can fasten on to shawls, uh, cardigans, etc. Uh, we got restocked, but we also got some new ones in. Um, Alexandra had been asking us to get this. Alexandra, Alexandra Davidoff. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got these as well. I believe these are all new, so this doesn't even cover what we just restocked. I like that one. You do? Yeah. And we have them in both uh, like a dark brown and also black. I like them a lot because you don't have to worry about buttonholes on cardigans. Mm-hmm. You just put those closures on them and, and go. Done. Done. Cool. What you got? Um, I've got some Nerd Bird enamel pens. Baller. Knitting is magic. Uh, craft with care. 
and nailed it. And then I've, we also have the um, Nerdbird Baller tote bag, which is pretty, it's very deep. You can fit a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, it's nice really tote. big. Cute and tote. It, and it has a square bottom as well, so it sits up pretty well. Oh, it sits up nicely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And then also... Homer has all the yarn. He grabbed all the yarn for himself. Well, I mean, you're not fast enough. It's not my <laughs> fault. Um, Shibui released a limited edition color called, uh, what is it? It is called Riviera. Um, I can see that. They released in a few different bases. It's this nice turquoise color. I don't know. You're not, I don't know if you're getting a very good sense from the screen, just how like turquoise no, this that is. Bluer. Yeah, it does look bluer yeah. than it really is. It's, it's like definitely more turquoise than what you're probably seeing. Uh, but it's very nice and limited edition, so if you want it, come and get it while it lasts. Uh, our rep told me we just, I, I just met with her a couple weeks ago, I think, and she said that if we had wanted any more of it too late, she can't get any more of it because it's all spoken for at this point. That is a nice color. Mm-hmm. We also got from Barocco a new base, uh, Modern Cotton DK. And this is, I believe it's got like a little, yeah, it's 60% Pima cotton, 40% um, rayon or viscose. And we got it, I want to say in about 14 or 15 different colors. That's a lot of colors. Yes, options are nice. Can I touch one? Thank you, that's nice. Isn't it? It's kind of, it's shiny like Pima cotton, but not as heavy, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not as slippery. Mm-hmm. Because Pima cotton's kind of heavy and slippery. Yeah, so, um, you know, as uh, it's getting warmer and folks are still wanting to make garments, sweaters, that kind of thing out of DK weight yarn, but want something a little more lightweight, it's a good option. Yeah, I like it. Yep. And then also, if you want something a little heavier than that, <laughs> we also got wow wool. Wow, wool. Wow, hundred percent merino wow. wool. How mm -hmm. many yards is that? Okay, I remember. It's basically roving. Yeah. Um, Balls of roving. Okay. <laughs> It's saying, oh, here we go. It is we, we do 67 still yards versus 67. Mm -hmm, 68 yards, 67.8. So We still do get requests for this stuff. And um, even though the blanket that I made out of the other roving did not hold up, um, I made a cat bed out of it, and my cats adore it. So The one certainly does. <laughs> he stole it from the other cat. I, I had a picture, but I lost it. But basically, the cat was in it like this. I think on I his back. Picture. Do you maybe have that picture? I might have that picture. He stole it from the other cat, so I might have to make her another one. So she probably will be like, "I'm too good for this bed now." She well, she was at first. She wouldn't get in it for a mm -hmm. couple of weeks, and then she loved it. Yeah, I think you had to open it up more or something. It was a little too enclosed to begin with, and then you took some of the roving out of the top. Did I? I think so. Yeah, I think so. But, so, we'll see. I'll make something out of this one and we'll see how it goes. If this is a little bit more felted than the other one, which is mm -hmm. a good thing when you're making those types of blankets. Yeah, I mean, you say it's roving, but I've already fielded the question, can you spin with it? I'm like, I'm not sure I would oh, not. Oh, I could try that too. I'll we, try that. You want to try it? Yeah, I'll try it. Cool, yeah, because that is a question and I do not know the answer to it, so... I don't know. Um, we it's not as thick as our spinning roving braids. Mm -hmm. It though. looks like it's more, I don't know, not a little less fluffy. Which would be good if you're going to like arm knit. Exactly. So I don't know. We'll maybe have to find out about that. We got it in um, four colors. Uh, we got kind of the ecru, we got the gray, and then a blue and a pink, a baby blue and a pink. Okay. So we've got a few options. All right, looks good. Yep. 
Um, what else? So I think that's it for what is new to the shop right now. But we have some boxes to open. We got some boxes to open. All right, here you can have this modern cotton bag. Although I think I might make something. I'm gonna make something. I'll take it. Right. Okay, so we also um, got some boxes here. Uh, as Amy can tell you, I do not like to sit on things that come in. So all these boxes that we got just so happened to show up this morning. So let's get into it, see what we have. The first one is from Knit One Crochet Two. Ah. This was a reorder of Daisy. Which is? Which is? Is it 100% it's it's linen? No, it's 38 linen, 32 silk, 30% hemp. So, and it's a DK weight, I believe, for, it's DK, or is it sport? I think it's DK. I think it's DK too. That would be a nice summer top as well. It will. And look at that bright color. Hold up that bright color. What's that one doing just hanging out? This was, no uh, tag? when I talked to, is um, it mine? No, it is ours. This one, they, they mentioned this. They said that, uh, when I talked to their, uh, person who was about to send out the yarn, they mentioned that they're going to throw in an, a skein that was, you know, not in perfect condition, but for use for us that we could knit a couple of, um, test swatches out of they said it would be a good idea to t to knit two test swatches and then to block one of them uh -huh. so that we could show the difference between unblocked and blocked oh that's a good idea mm -hmm. so that's what that's for oh nice okay yep, very yep. good all right so that's all that that is all that i believe yes that's all i'm seeing in there All right, so next up we have Beat Street Yarn. I believe we got some kits. Mm -hmm. There we go, there's a PO. From Beat Street, we got these. And it's going to fight on me. These unbeatable kits. And they make, there you go. The unbeatable scarf or shawl, it looks more like a shawl. That is that right there. Um, it's made out of this loom original silk yarn. That is. Lots of different textures going on there. Okay, it's actually a mix. One of them is 100% silk, one of them is 100% hemp. One of them is 80% silk, 20% cotton, and then finally, it's another that's 100% silk. So it's an interesting blend. They're packaged pretty cute. Totes, adorbs. <laughs> what do you mean you don't like to sit on the yarn? I don't like uh, when we get yarn and you're like, okay, well let's hide it in the back until we have an event. I'm like, uh, I like to get, get in the system and put it out, which means if we get a package in like the week before a podcast, I'm not just going to like leave it in the box. I'm going to barcode it and put it out. Okay. Why do you ask? Because you said that and I was like, what? Do you think I meant like literally sit <laughs> on yarn? That's weird. I'm not doing that. Um, okay, so that's Beat Street. Where are they from? Do you remember? I don't have to remember because <laughs> <laughs> the return label says Sheboygan Falls, Wisconsin. Sheboygan. 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 All right, next up. We've got Frab Jewish fibers. I love them. What do we have from Frab Huh. I don't get to open anything. You get to just watch me drink tea. You can like drink it slowly and 
do your eyebrow thing or whatever. That would be a nice sweater color. Mm-hmm. Okay, we just got Maybe a couple of... Maybe you could of... crinkle the package so you're in front of the mic. I don't know. Oh, you weren't being serious? Mm -hmm. My fault. Mad Hatter's sport weight, too. Mad that Hatter's sport like weight. a nice men's sweater. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, though I, I like think I... Yeah. You already wound up your yarn, so you're yeah. using it. Yeah, I'm going for that, no matter what. Um, We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, so we got a couple of bags of Mad Hatter. I think these are just back order, so no big deal. What color is it? Okay, this one is Tolgi Wood. I think I remember we had that color before, and it didn't look quite that olive. Yeah, it was there more brown. A, there can be a little variance. And the and other his one, hand died. the other one is tea tray. Oh, I, they always send candy in there. Did they send candy? That's tea tray, if you're wondering. Mm -hmm. That. I'm not seeing any candy. Where's my candy, Wonderland? Yeah, I mean, I always miss having the opportunity to put that in the trash. Stop. <laughs> Where's my candy? Some mints and chocolates? Yes. Oh, I lost my sweet tooth when I was a child. It's very sad. I won't bore you with the story. Now I think you have to. Well, it's pretty straightforward. I had a sweet tooth and it fell out, and now I, every all sweets taste like dirt to me. It's extremely sad. What's in the last box? The last box. Okay, last box is some more shibui. Okay, this is um, basically reorder, plus we had a customer request for something. I forget which one it is. And I just looked in the system and determined what all we needed and place to reorder. So just Shibuya, mix of bases. Here's a couple of bags of Lunar. Also some Echo. I try not to make too much noise with the bags. Those bags aren't as... Yeah, they're not as noisy. A couple of bags of Vine. So vine? That, There's Vine in there? Vine... The paper yarn. Yeah. So yeah, that's all that is. So that's all the new stuff we have. Yes. All right. Cool. Well, uh, do we have any finished objects? No, do you? Yeah, I do. What you got? I got a crop top. <laughs> Weren't you the one that was supposed to make a crop top on her? Have I talked about that? Can I try that one on? Yeah. In f yeah, you should. Right now? Just put it on. Right now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I modified the neckline on that because it was too high. I wore it uh, for our Saturday anniversary sale, and, and the neckline was way too high, so I went home that evening. Is there a front and a back, or does yeah, it matter? Yeah, actually, the back is um, where the color work joins are, so... Um, this is the back. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Good so, to know. So, um, I went home and I... Hey, should I take my shirt off first? No. I pulled out some of the, the neck ribbing, and then I went down and I put in a lifeline where um, I wanted the neck to end. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Mm-hmm. It looks great. Hold up. There we go. It yeah. looks great. Okay, sit back down so I can explain. Okay. So I put a lifeline where I wanted the neck to be, mm -hmm. and then um, I just started ripping out, and I had to actually cut the short rows. So I had, like, rows. Like, I couldn't save all of it, but I ripped out, and I had the ribbing left. And then um, I just joined the yarn and bound off with a new yarn. And it worked fine. It worked really great. So don't be afraid to modify something if you don't like the way it fits mm -hmm. do you like the way it fits it could be a little more snug <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's supposed to have negative ease i'm all about that negative ease <laughs> no it's supposed to have positive ease that's what i meant i want negative ease i need okay, if anything I need, I need more negativity in my I life like negativity mm -hmm. um so this was a fun it was fun to knit. It was super fast because you start the color work and you just want to see the next, 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 next thing. Um, I watch 
a lot of Arne and Carlos videos because I just really like Arne and Carlos. And they, um, they said color dominance is not a thing, especially for continental knitters. But I would beg to disagree. Look at the white and blue here versus the white and blue here. Doesn't it look like the white is the dominant color here? and the blue is the dominant color here and it's just because of the way I held the yarn I held both strands in one finger um, but it's just a difference of whether you hold it on the left or the right isn't that weird hmm. so yeah or I, I mean I truly I don't know if it's because even after it's blocked it, it it showed that way before it was blocked a lot but it also could be just that the um, number of stitches in this particular row is less than the number of stitches and they're not as stretched out as this. So it could be that too. But it really looks like the blue is the dominant color here while the white is the dominant color. Yeah, it's definitely, there is some color dominance there. But otherwise, um, if you're doing a one by one, I can see that totally. Otherwise, I don't really get it anywhere. It's not really that noticeable uh, anywhere else. But yeah, so there we go. Uh, there is such a thing as color dominance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is such a thing as gender disparity when it comes to crop top patterns. Okay, take it off. <laughs> I don't want to take it off. I feel like you've had just a little bit more of a sleeve. Not too much. And the native ease. Then it, w so, would you wear a sweater like that? I'm a little hot right now, if I'm being honest. Well, I also feel warm. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a DK sweater, and it's basically, um, you know, all the color work makes it double thick. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it is a warmer... It's just a crazy design, and I think that's one of the reasons people like it. Because mm -hmm. you're supposed to wear something under it. Um, I disagree. Shut it. <laughs> All right, take it off. All right. Well, you can leave it inside out and show the inside of it if you like. If you like. See, all that stranded color work makes your sweater, like, double thick. Yeah, it does. No wonder I was getting yeah, warm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's warm. Yeah. But it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's a fun knit. I recommend it. Give it a try. There you go. Oh, show, show that one again. You can see where the beginning of the round was because of the color. Mm-hmm. There you go. These um, Ys are my favorite. I like the look of that from this side. Mm. There was a trend a couple of years ago where people were doing stranded color work in the front of their... holding the floats in the front of their sweaters. You could you could find them at Target and stuff. You remember that? Yeah, I vaguely it was remember weird. that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's so strange. Why would anyone ever do that? And then I saw the this particular motif and I thought, I, really, I would do that. That's really pretty. I would do that. Okay. Uh, that is the only finished object I have. What are you working on? Okay. I'm still working on the toe-up socks. Progress has somewhat stalled on those, so I'm not even going to bother to pull them out because I've mostly been trying to focus on the shop sample that Amy asked me to do. So I'm probably about halfway through it at this point. And it's this. So it's the Hieron Hieronymus cowl. I need to, basically once it's double, I'll uh, do a three needle bind off to seal it, seam it together, and then done. It's very soft. Mm-hmm. It's Wolfolk Far is the yarn, which is indeed very soft. It's very soft. I really like the pattern that's emerging. Mm hmm It's a Cecilio Cecilia Campuchario sequence 
knitting pattern. And these are two different colors. It's got a gray in it, and um, just the way you make the stitches creates this zigzag design that's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. All right. It's very straightforward. That's uh, my work in progress. That is not socks. Uh, how about you? What are you working on? I'm working on that wingspan shawl by Kyle Vey. Um, he did it. His pattern calls for a gradient yarn, but I do not have a gradient yarn with that many yards. It calls for 800 yards of fingering weight. So I thought I would do it in um, three different colors of uh, TML, TML glitter. Um, starting with white or antler or paper. I think it's paper. And then Berlin. Somebody won a game of yarn chicken. I did. And Berlin. And then for the tips, foundry. Um, and I got a, a few, I got two feathers in, and then I started, I just did a line of the Berlin, and it looked like a straight line. I didn't like the way it looked. Mm -hmm. So um, I tinked it back, and I decided to do kind of like a stranded color work with it to get the, um, to the feathers to show up and not just be a line. Of gold so if you oh, hold that part so what I did was I, I did the feathers in white and then I did um, part of the row with the Berlin which is kind of a brownie gold here hold that keep keep holding it and so it really makes if you do some stranded color work it really makes the feathers pop and then I've got the bottom feathers coming along. The bottom feathers will be the gold Berlin color. Yeah, so there's definitely a right side and a wrong side to this there because is, of the stranded color work. There is, because of the color work. And hope we hold it, like stretch it out, don't let it come off the needle yet. Yeah. I want to see how the light looks through it. If there's like a line that you can see, when it gets blocked, it's going to be stretched a lot. And I'm wondering if there's going to be, the color work starts right here. So I'm, I'm hoping that there's not like a shadow behind it, you know? Mm -hmm. It looks okay so far. I think so. Yeah. All right, you want to see the back? There's the stranded color work on the back. It was not hard to figure out. Um, it was a little tedious just because you keep having to switch the floats because there are long lines. I guess that might be... in. I'm not sure if you call it intuarja or just stranded color work or if that's even an interchangeable term in this case because there are long lines of just one color and I tried to catch my floats every three stitches because I didn't want any jewelry or anything getting caught on the floats because uh, I would cry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I am maybe, at this point, it looks like halfway done. Because even though it's short in the center, there's some uh, linen stitch in the cent center. And then but the, the side wings, there's short rows, and the sides of it go really far. So after this one, I'm going to do one in black. Yay. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. So you enjoy that? To the point to where you'd be happy knitting it again um it is is yeah i would knit it again because it is not a complicated pattern it's not a hard pattern it's just lace really so as long as you use your stitch markers and your row counter and a lifeline um you'll be good the repeats are easy to memorize um and there, there are what he calls intuition instructions. There are line by line instructions, which I absolutely needed. But there, what, but once you get going, you you know how to make a feather, and so the yeah, it's it's easy. Tell me about what you did right here. That's the linen stitch we were talking about. Oh, okay. And that is a um, knit one, slip one with yarn in front. And on the back, you uh, slip one with yarn in back and purl. So 
that's why it looks almost woven on the front. Hmm. And then it looks on the back really bumpy. And then on the front it looks like a, a woven fabric almost. So yeah, I'm enjoying this. I'm spending a lot more time than I probably should be doing this and perhaps neglecting other things, but <laughs> I kind of want to get it finished. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of things to knit. Okay, so what's left? Giveaway? Yes. All right, so the giveaway for last week, um, what was the question? It was, what kind of summer knit-alongs should we do? That's right. And we got a lot of great... You guys gave me a lot of great patterns to put in my queue. Yeah? Yeah, I put a lot of them in there. Um, I think the consensus is maybe a lightweight pullover or lightweight t-shirt type mm -hmm. thing. Um, the modern cotton would probably be great for that. Yep. It's the DK. Mm -hmm. You could do... Um, any number of cottons or linens. Uh, we have that both in fingering and DK. Mm -hmm. And you know what I was thinking of just the other day was the Anzula linen and silk that we have. Yeah. I would make a nice Vera? One. Vera, that's mm -hmm. a sport weight. Yes. Which is nice. I've used that before. I made Absolutely. a spring showers jacket with it. Mm -hmm. It was nice. Cool. So we had um, 17. That's right. And the giveaway, by the way, was for a thin um, wrist ruler. Yeah, champagne color wrist ruler. So random number between 1 and 17. Got number 10. Number 10. Number 10. Who was number 10? Let's see. Let me double check. Amanda Swed. S sweat. Amanda. Amanda. Yay! Happy! Yay. Yay! And it was your birthday recently, so. Yeah. Happy birthday. You get a wrist ruler. Happy go. birthday, Amanda. I'm so glad you won. It worked out. Mm -hmm. Yay! All right. So, what is going to be our giveaway this week? We did not even discuss that, did we? Um, what about one of these pins? Or do you want to do yarn? Have we given away a pin last? I think we've given away a pin. What else? If not yarn or pin, I've got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> How about some yarn? So, uh, what did we get that's new? What did we get that's new? We got... Um, oh, yeah, those would be good. The unbeatable scarf? Yeah, let's give away one of those. Okay, cool. So, we're going to give away an unbeatable scarf. Which is a nice um, summer knit with silk and cotton and hemp. Very nice pattern included, needles or not. That is delightful. <laughs> so what's our question going to be? Mm. Summer knitting kits. I guess... Uh, does anybody have any projects lined up with summer in mind? Oh, well, maybe. Although that's very similar to our last question. That is. Question. What you got? Ooh. Where do you like to knit most during the summer? Okay. Do you knit by the pool? Do you knit inside <laughs> in an air-conditioned space? Mm -hmm. Do you go somewhere else for the summer? And knit? If so, where do you go? Cool. Where is your favorite place to do your summer knitting? That it's works. Probably not next to a fire. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> All right. So that is it for us for this week. We'll see you again in a couple of weeks. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.